Hello and welcome to a very special edition of CPR's Clubhouse Live Top 5. And uh, what we're going to do in this series is we're going to have guests come in and uh, discuss their labels. And uh, right now we got the Viper crew. Uh, we got a uh, producer from Viper 7, uh, Gino Caporelli. Uh, you also may know him from volume uh, number two, uh, Gino Caporelli Destiny. Uh, also, the queen of Viper 7, I can say that. Um, <laughs> and, and that is uh, the, the number one female in all of Viper. Uh, we have Deneen with us as well. And you know, you know, the Duchess Cheryl Rodriguez, my tag team partner, my partner in crime at the CPR's Clubhouse crew. And I, you know, for me to do this episode of um, Viper, the top five, I had to have Cheryl here. Uh, Cheryl, you know, <laughs> what people don't understand about Viper, Viper was a, 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 a Italian American freestyle label, right? With, with with all the Italian American freestyle artists from a certain area. So why not have the Italian Latin American Duchess with us here to do the Viper Seven Top Five? Well, yeah, I'm ready. She's I'm ready. ready. Oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Before it's good. we get started, before we get started, let me let me go to Gino Caparelli, who who was a, a producer for Viper. Um, what are your earliest thoughts of putting the label together? Uh, actually, it was funny how Adam and I met. I was a, a DJ at a club called Christine's, and there was a guy that kept coming in, and he was very different. He wore a suit. You know, everybody had jeans on, and this guy would come in and have a suit, and he would just watch the DJ. And I see him hold a cassette in his hand, and he wouldn't come up to me. About three weeks later, the bartender, who was my friend, said, I have my friend Adam. He wants to bring a cassette up to the DJ booth. Can you play it? So I can't play it. I mean, I was playing Cynthia and it, the place was packed, you know. Right. I remember playing it in the earphones and it was um, really good. It was Then Came You, but it didn't have the the woman on it. It didn't have a girl's voice on it yet. Right. And that's how I met Adam. And um, from there, we did Then Came You. And it went through a couple different labels. Uh, Goix was one. Uh, that Again, it was on record bar yeah and then it was on micmac yes. um and then from there Deneen, adam and myself became really close Deneen and i were just married adam was a you know was part of the wedding you know and um and we just we remember having uh, i'll be loving you and then it was like we need to do a new Deneen record and it, it just yeah. happened so quick yeah, i will say right. one thing adam was the fastest person they get a song. I think we did the Deneen album in 10 days. Yep. I'm not kidding. Wow. Yeah, and you know, when we talk about Adam, it's Adam Morano, um, Viper 7 Records, uh, distribution by Metropolitan. And of course, you know, the, the man behind Collage and I'll Be Loving You, that song that to this day is on Top 40 uh, radio. Amazing. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get to the, the number one female in all of Viper and the one that uh, really uh, pushed the, the label to, to the highest... Uh, uh, <laughs> Highest mountains, right? So we have uh, Deneen. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Oh my God, now, my pleasure. This is the first time that I have a a, a a couple that were not only a production group, but they were married. They shared children. They're no longer married. And they're here on this show because they're the very best of friends to do the Viper Top 5. I hurt you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Oh, it should be, man. I freaking love it. Love it. Baby mama. Baby, baby mama. Best friends. <laughs> so yep. what, what is your first recollections of getting together with Gino and Adam Morano with uh, Viper? Uh, see, he, I didn't even meet Gino yet. I don't think I met you at that point, Jay. Uh, you had gotten a demo tape of me singing Wind Beneath My Wings from your cousin. That yeah, was my I had met you. At the same time he met Adam, he met me. And we went to, he said, stop by, stop by the studio. They were recording at Sigma. And I yeah. was going to Community College of Philadelphia. It was, I was pleasing my father and uh, going there. And he said, swing by and I'm recording with this guy that I met. And, uh, you know, I want you to meet him. I go in. They're recording. They're they're doing. Yeah, we were doing Then Came You. Yeah, the master version of it. And well, Gino said, it had no female. He said, I think it would be good. And that was, that was Gino's I idea. He's, he was like, oh, yeah. let's use her and. Let go in, and I'm like, no, I, I wouldn't take my backpack off. I do remember that. 
just like holding on to him, be like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for. I'm she looked ready. in. She had a light. She had a light blue sweatsuit on. I never forget. I don't know. Yeah. She had a light blue sweatsuit on. I can't even believe that you remember that. That's so funny. Yeah. I, all I remember is the backpack and getting in. That the is. That is true love and friendship. But no, no, uh, really, I don't remember what no, I, I was 17. Well, yesterday, well, and he remembers you know, wearing okay. that. Right. Man. So you, you know, you know, it was funny. CPR, his stuff was really good, yeah. but it didn't have an edge. Like it was well written and it was well, but it had no breakbeat. It had no, you know, right. it was missing something. So me being on the top of my game at the time, I was a global reporter. I just heard a female in it, and I heard a breakbeat in it. And mm -hmm. Deneen was just, I mean, she just knocked it out. Absolutely. It was crazy. And yeah. I was so nervous, but you they were great to work with. We had fun. Yeah, and I, and you can see that the, the evolution of freestyle was happening from your area because Viper was truly the first one to really revolutionize our music. Uh the legends had, had gone. Um the 80s was done. Um it was it was um it was little Susie take me in your arms, but then we needed something more in 92, 93. And then it was in 93 where Viper came uh, into the scene. And it was, again, Italian-American freestyle label, right? And and this new sound that you know it's freestyle, but it had other elements or it was gritty. And, and it was like uh, taking from a bunch of different other genres and just putting them together and putting it out as freestyle. So let me go to the Duchess Cheryl Rodriguez because um, I want to ask her. When you first heard Viper, and and I know that this is your label because uh, this is what you were caught up on. Um, my girl, it's my girl. What 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 was your thought uh, when you first heard the first compilation and the first uh, music? I was hooked immediately. Immediately, it, it was just the right sound that I personally wanted. I was waiting for me, especially around that time it became the sound of freestyle. It was what we were listening to. It was the majority of what you would find other people listening to, and it was just circulating and more so um, than than others. And I say in comparison to like artistic, just because we're out in New England, um, we're Viper artistic, Viper artistic. It's all you heard about. So, you know, especially when, when I think it's one that you're gonna find most of my top five come from, the, the the entire compilation is like I probably could sing from start to finish every single song every word you know it just it took control man it was it was what you needed to be listening to if you loved freestyle at the time it was uh it was uh the year before I started CPR's clubhouse because um I was in, enrolled in in the college that I was in and I wasn't part of the radio team um and here we are all these years later and we're talking about it but I remember getting the the Viper body number one, um, and um, and listening to all the songs on there, and they all became like love songs that I would dedicate to the girlfriend that I had at the time, um, and and so like I remember um, bodies one and, and and then quickly volume two was also out, so yep. it was like you 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 didn't want to choose from um, because um, there was so much there was this influx of music, but I just remember that it became the soundtrack of my time at that time. Right. Um, you know, and Collage and Viper 7, Deneen, you know, Caporali, I had no idea that we'll have this relationship now all these years later. But then to me, too, um, Viper not only became the, the label that, that people wanted to emulate, because without Viper, there's no Tasmania. Without Tasmania, yep. there's no artistic. So it's just this the evolution, right? right. So, so the thing for me is is that, you know, what Viper became, this, this mainstream... Uh, uh, freestyle label, uh, Italian American uh, mm -hmm. uh, record label that ended up uh, on top forty radio stations with, with with a few of the songs. It just became that that sound that freestyle needed at the time because at that time the radio station that I work at now, where we do clubhouse dance music, we were playing techno because we didn't have enough freestyle to play, um, and so this was a breath of fresh air. And if I may add, you know, what's funny, too, is is at this particular time, like I was living in Jersey. And so I always tease about this on, on air when I when I tell the story. But between Collage, I'll Be Loving You and TKA's Louder Than Love, we used to have this uh, radio station in Jersey City called The Box. Well, it wasn't just Jersey City. I mean, it was I, I think, it, you know, it was pretty spread, but it wasn't um, it didn't go up beyond New Jersey. 
and you would call in and you would order the video. It was like, I, I say MTV on steroids because there was no talk and there was no commercials. It was just whatever you were requesting, it would just come on and you'd boom. So I went broke over collage, I'll be loving you. <laughs> With the amount of times I charged this song to watch the video, it was insane. It's great. That's what everybody on my block was listening to, the entire neighborhood. That's what we were jamming out to. And it was a lot of Viper, but it was that one particular song. It lasted, the hype of that song alone lasted for like three years. And then it still never went away. Never. Crazy. It was, it was crazy how much, you know, for us, it, it was like, you know, our first two songs really hit. I mean, mm -hmm. Billboard, like, you know, radio. And it was, I was like, oh my God, this is so easy. You know, and then the <laughs> third and fourth, the third right. and fourth record, and we're like, okay, it's not as easy anymore. Mm -hmm. But we were lucky because um, I worked for Q102. Yep. And I had a, a three hour mix show on Saturday nights, but I had freedom. You know, he yep. would tell me some stuff to play, but I had freedom. And I, I was really close with the program director, and he was willing to play the song if it got enough requests yep. and it did you know philly people italian people just like spanish people they're well loyal we're loyal some of us are loyal some of us aren't but so many people embraced her that the radio stations were flooded with calls and then when you start to get one ad then you get another ad then you get a new york ad then you get a connecticut ad then you get a florida ad all of a sudden it's, it's on the top 100. you know so we were very very lucky and and i to credit to adam it had that little bit of a pop flair. It wasn't so Latin freestyle, you know? And I it was freestyle. Was, we loved it. You made well, it your he, own. Has, he has a rock. He liked a lot of rock music. So he tried to put elements, the guitar. Get the car. The, the yeah. collage part had that that real guitar. He That was yeah. something he wanted. He would do that in different songs. He was very, very super talented. Very, yeah. he thought outside the box, I think. That was yeah, played. I think Rob Federici played that part. Yeah, he did. He played it live, yeah. I remember. We recorded, so that, 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 I remember you and I'll be loving you in the same night. And I said to him, yeah. that's a hit. What you just yeah. sang is a hit. He wrote them in the same night. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, um, there's a lot of respect that we have to have for an unsung hero like Rob Federici. Absolutely. Who, who has always not cared about the limelight, has not cared about credit. What he cared about was business. Yep. Pay me, pay me. You know what I mean? It's like come, come to the do your session, pay me for the time that you're here. And he's still that way. He's, and, yeah, yeah. But he, still, he was good though. Like I feel like and, and we just were with him. I, him I love it. I love that because of the fact that, you know, to this day, Rob Federici is one of the unsung heroes. And you know, I've I've spoken to others in regards to the production that comes out of it. He's not there to develop artists, he's there to get the product done, complete it, get out of here. If you want him to develop you, then you gotta, you know, pay him the extra fee. Yeah, yep. He's got a great ear too. He's got a he very, really very got good it. ear. Very good. Uh, so let me let us start this top five because I'm I'm curious to see what the the Viper Seven folk are gonna be oh, uh, using for their list. So let me <laughs> let me start with the uh, producer of uh, of uh, Viper, and that is Gino Caporelli. Gino, uh, what do you have for your number five on your top five Viper? Okay, it's going to shock a lot of people, but my top, my number five is I'll be loving you. Not number one, number five. Wow. I'm a, remember, I'm a true freestyle guy, so I'm, I'm not into the pop freestyle. I, I want the true freestyle record. There were actually, <laughs> there were actually 10 different um, uh, uh, Viper, Viper uh, compilations. It's amazing, right? So wow. they have the, the, the Viper Millennium one that was released after they left. Um, metropolitan distribution and so uh that that is my number five it's a viper millennium freestyle dance party which was uh back uh in 2008 i want to say um i lost the page of course because you know we're live but uh the the fact is is that he did a song there that almost got me taken off the radio because at that time they were they weren't ready to um to hear this right so my number five is is the most controversial song that I played at that time. It's Collage Boyfriend Girlfriend, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so okay. let me just let me just let you know about this song. So this is <coughs> uh, this is a true story. So I'm at the radio station and I play Boyfriend and Girlfriend. I was in charge of the pick hit of the week, 
so oh, because wow. you know i heard of dream boy dream girl and all the different um parodies of it right or replicas or whatever i said let me do this boyfriend and girlfriend and i played it as the big hit i heard it i heard the lyrics so this song is about a woman that has a uh um <laughs> a love for her best friend's boyfriend you know and so i played the song <laughs> i'm in love with my best friend's boyfriend and then you know adam's voice is you Makes know me oh, sick. Yes, yeah, all yeah. right. <laughs> so, so, um, uh, I never really thought of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but just remember, Gino and Danine, that he was in love with Jocelyn Enriquez, right? So, anyways, look, I'm in uh, love with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, boyfriend and girlfriend, boyfriend and girlfriend, when I played it, uh, one of my co hosts called me, goes, That's disgusting. I can't believe you played that. Blah, 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 blah. And then, since we do the, the, the picking of the week <clears> twice, um uh, uh an hour so we do it you know at the bottom of the hour every hour uh the second time that i play it the radio station shuts down completely completely so wow. it's like it's like i'm in love with my my best friend's boyfriend and the <laughs> station shuts off <laughs> and i'm like wow man i'm getting punished for this one you know so it was like divine intervention right no I can't so we had to go we had to, we had to go into the auxiliary uh auxiliary um radio station Turn everything back on, and I didn't dare play the song again oh, um, for, for up to a month after. But for me, my number five. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I can't I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm going to be thinking about that all night. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Listen to it. I you know, used to I'm wonder with, sometimes. Yeah, I'm in love with my best friend's boyfriend or my girlfriend's boyfriend, and I, you know, this is the way that I'm going to feel until the end of time. Oh, it's sorry. A, it, it was it was ahead of its time because now it's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. I never, do, I never really listened that hard to it. Oh, God. I'm going to play it this week and dedicate it to you guys. Oh, you better. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote it for you, Gino. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, Duchess, what do you have for your number five? Well, my number five, I'll Be Loving You I didn't make my five either, even though it probably should have, but it didn't. And so my number five is actually Adam Nino in security um a song i was absolutely and truly obsessed with for a very long time my number i five. was obsessed with that one too. I, that, was, yeah. that was anthony right you know he yeah, said it was anthony yeah mm -hmm. right so it was nino anthony adam collage it was all one yeah. person well so we, we so many we, different we names. know even keep track. Well, we know why that had to happen right you guys know about yeah. that story well, yes, we could get to that in a moment. I want to hear, hear the, so, so the collage, I'll be loving you dance version was in English and Spanish. I love it. It's so cheesy from the same <laughs> millennium, from the same millennium uh, uh, compilation because it's like, yo te amare todo mi vida. <laughs> so it, it does make my honorable mentions and I do play it. I just don't know who is the female version uh, or, or the the female voice on the remix to "I'll Be Loving You" the dance mix. I always thought it was Stephanie. not. So Stephanie, and, it might have been Stephanie. Sure. But, but on the original "I'll Be Loving You," Denise's on it. She's underneath Adam. Like there's a little bit of Denise in there, and "I'll Be Loving You." Uh, Denise. So I'm I'm curious to know which one is your number five. Uh, so what do you have on your top five Viper? So my number five is Destiny by Gino Caparelli. Nice. I like that. <laughs> Gino Caparelli. Make my list. It didn't make I, my I think list. you did such a good job, Gino. You're, you're vocal. You're just great. <laughs> Very versatile. <laughs> and so Listen, by we the would way, go do shows and people would come up to him and say, Gino Caparelli, are you going to be performing? I go, yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gino Caparelli is, is my number four. So let's talk about that for a moment. Love that record. How much of your vocals are on that record, Gino? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about uh, the different name situation. Um, Get ready, buckle up. <laughs> well, you know, he had a couple, he was in a couple different contracts. So, you know, TPE was signed with somebody and then Collage was signed with somebody. So in order to get around all those contracts, he started to change his name. Um, but I had a concept of destiny and I had sort of like a track with the sample. Right. And then he's like, let's do it. Let's put it under your name. So he said, you do all the original production, he'll finish it. And we put it under my name. But honestly, she's right. 
we, I still have people inboxing me. Oh, I, your vocals are great on there. I'm like, thank you. Yeah, you sound thank awesome, you. you know. It's, uh, it's not awesome. It's something that's going to carry with you for, for always. You have a 12-inch record with your name on it. I think you need to make a comeback. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> Everybody so, else is. Really, Nick? So, Time yeah, to come out, G. Tell them who you uh, really are. Yeah, it's amazing that uh, that we can have all this conversation by doing a top five Viper. And they had 10 volumes, and most of the songs in those volumes, especially number 10, 9, 8, when you start counting them down, I'm like, why, Lord? Why? Um, and it was like uh, Secret Garden. The the, uh, the the That's just one specific. When I knew that they jumped the shark, uh, Viper jumped the shark was when they had this 12-inch, and it was the All-Stars. And it was, and I believe it was Secret Garden or some some Viper, you know, a bunch of artists, and it was like a dance song, and it was it was so it was so bad, you know. Um, yeah. But I don't know any song from Four On. From Four On, I don't know. I don't know any song from Four On. No, I don't. I don't think we were recording anymore with him at that yeah. point. Three, we didn't record anymore. Yeah. So that's why he really triple and quadruple down on the different names. But uh, my number four is uh, Gino Caporelli's Destiny. Uh, right now, we're going to go to the Duchess. What is your number four? Faded Destiny, Sammy C. Nice. Good one. Nice. Now, I, I didn't I did my any Sammy C on mine because he deserved his own list, right? Like the top yeah, five Sammy does. C. Like, sure. we need to do something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be something that I'll put, a, put together soon for the people that love Sammy C. Um, yeah, you know, I've invited him here to the show for for many years and um we've had him here in massachusetts um at one time he came to do a show here and uh, he became the headliner he knocked down the headliner we had so he could be the headliner that's how much this area loved him so um, great I, I love sammy yeah hopefully in the future so my number four is gino caporelli destiny her number four is sammy c faded destiny Denine, what is your number four my number four is summer night with you by shane oh who is man. also Adam and me. Oh. I love that record. That's a great yeah. song. Makes you so, feel dirty. It was fun. <laughs> I love that song. I, I absolutely love that song. Me too. Um, it, didn't, it didn't make my top five, but um, that was a song that I dedicated to someone. I want to spend a summer night with you because we got together in the summer. So that was like when I was dating who I was dating at the time. That was a song that I put on, on a, you know, those mixed cassettes. I do. Mix. I love that record. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. so, is that, so is it shame or shaming? Shame. 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 It's, it's shame. And he, listen, and he would be shame. very inadamant about the name. Yeah, he it was definitely shame. We've had the conversation 40 times. <laughs> yep. It had to be that. And so I might put that in my these, shows. I really like that record. For all these years, I've always called him shaming because I'm like, who would name themselves shame? But now we also have the group pain. So, I mean, yeah. that's been corrected. Yeah. Um, so. That's an amazing uh, record, by the way. Uh, I think that that song right there was one of the ones that I played the most off of the Viper. Uh, I like it. Too. I think it's yeah, a great record. Gina, and what you got? Angela Garcia's song on there too. The uh, sound oh. uh, between the two, they were like, yeah. Ah, um, that is one of my favorite Viper records of all time. Yeah, me too. Yeah. My num my number four is Stephanie Morano's Symphony of Love. Nice. Ah, oh, it's a good one. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That the symphony of love, yeah, it goes on and on. Yeah. These are, That's a great once, record. Beautiful. Once, once Viper got going, these are the songs that we played. It was like we were stuck on buttons one and two for a few Yeah, years. me too. Me too. I and, love it. And and in Connecticut, when Connecticut radio stations started playing freestyle, they got stuck on Viper one and two. So it was really hard to move them away from that because I, you know, it was it was just it wasn't a Latin based sound, it was an Italian based sound. Yeah, so really it, became, it became um it became theirs. It was their version of freestyle. Latin hip hop created the freestyle, the hardcore, you know, freestyle. That, but the the Viper created the Italian American version of freestyle, which people took to. That's um, so it really is because I never realized yeah. while yeah. we were in that 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 was. And it was very it was very radio friendly. That's why we yeah. wanted to do it. We don't want to put music out without trying to make anything back. We want a radio right. friendly record. Right, right. So you know, you, you guys did a great job. And and by the way. And, you know, the Latino community embraced the Viper uh, 7 music, and that's where it became so famous, because now you had the Italian-Americans mm. and the Latinos, uh, Puerto Ricans and, and Mexicans and 
Cubans and you know Dominicans all loving freestyle, and they're all together having a good time uh, playing all this music. It was it was a great togetherness. Um, you know, one of my favorite events to go to was to go to um, uh, one of the shows in Connecticut that featured Viper. Um, yeah, and, yeah, good shows there. We had good shows there. I remember yeah. we were there a few times there. Yeah, and, and it was it was the, the commercial radio station that was doing them here at the time. Yeah, so they still we got do every or no? Are there a lot of freestyle shows? Not not as many as we thought we should have, um, but yeah. I hope in the future we can have a Viper Seven reunion type. Uh, oh, could you imagine how cool? Gino Caparelli is in a headline, though. I know he's somewhere. <laughs> Anthony is somewhere in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I'll find him. We have to find him. But uh, Gino Caparelli is going to headline the show here in Massachusetts. It'll be Deneen <laughs> and Gino. Okay. <laughs> Good, luck. Good luck with that one. <laughs> it's going to be the nicest uh, lip sync battle ever. Um, <laughs> he's got moves like Jagger. Yeah. There you go. So we got the five and the four. Everybody got your list, uh, the, the five and the four out. Good, perfect. Um, so let's start with number three. I'm going to start with Deneen. What was your number three? I have three as Fate of Destiny on mine for Sammy C. I'm, I'm a huge Sammy C fan. I love his We voice. always talk about unsung heroes in freestyle, right? Yeah. Sammy C is an unsung hero in freestyle. I can't, I'll never I stop feel, saying it. Whether he likes me or not, I'll never stop saying it. He's a good, good I guy. Say, good I, guy. Inbox him. I want him to join us, and I said, "Why don't you come hop on?" And you know, I I think he just honestly he never got his due. And I think he's yeah. just so talented, yeah. and I think it got lost in all the nonsense of who wrote who. Right, G. I mean, it was he was so yeah. good though. I mean, yeah, we came good. up together. I felt like he was a one great of guy. Us. Great guy too. Still, I mean, I still have a friendship with him now. And if, if we were to put a Viper Seven reunion, I would want him to headline. Like oh, honestly, like, it would be you know Deneen, Sammy C, awesome. would, yeah. be, and and the the way that the crowd would sing all his songs from Fate of Destiny to If You Wanted to Love Me to In Your Eyes, all these and I, I can see how can I, I remember them. I'm not looking at any list because yeah. because that's how when when he when he did his own stuff before he joined Viper, he already had his name out there, you know, in this community, in this New England area. And so, you know, he means a lot to us. You know, he he, he means a lot to us. Um, so anytime that he wants to come on. Yeah, so I already got my, I got my three three uh, headliners right now. I got Dino Caporelli, Deneen, and Sammy C. Deneen, thank you so much for Sammy C's uh, Fate of Destiny. Great choice uh, for your number three. Duchess, who do you have for your number three? Deneen, I remember you. I made the hey. list. Did you say? Did you just say the nine? <laughs> That's Denon. <laughs> D nine. Do you know Wait, my you. email is D nine? D and a nine. Is I think my last. She just unplugged herself again. Great. <laughs> you know how many people used to call her D nine? Oh D nine. I, I never get it wrong when I'm on air, but yet I have to be live with with. with, with her actually and say a name wrong, but I yeah. think it's so funny though. It's spelled D9. You can right. call me well, my it. favorite. My favorite thing about our radio show is that before I joined 90.7 and the show that I'm on right now, we used to have this uh, gentleman named DJ Alex Rivera. <laughs> and um, when Collage I'll Be Loving You uh, came out in 1993, he was at 90.7. I was at, I was not even attempting to be on the radio yet until the following year. But he would go on the radio and he would say, we continue on, it's college. I'll be loving you. And I'm like, and he, never, he never changed it. He was there for an additional few years and it will still be, we continue on with college. And I don't know, what are you talking about? Like, and so it's, uh, it's, it's college and denying. And by the way, I made that same mistake of, of Denon. Yeah, Denon didn't. Denon. Out there, they would go D9. I love you. Please forgive me. No, I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so Denise, I, I remember you was the first female song released on Viper. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. And the buzz was ridiculous. If you want to talk about more of, of your experience with that song, uh, please let us know like uh, what kind of an impact it had on you as an artist. I think for me to record it the same night that Adam recorded, I'll be loving you, you know, to just watch those two. It felt, something felt like magic when we were in the studio. I, and I usually, it's, I know it sounds corny, but it felt good. 
and something felt different about both records. And it, I didn't know which one. I thought I'll be loving you would be the, cause I just loved it. That's my number one. But mm. it was well, and I had, I was pregnant at the time with our son, Gino, our oldest. And so I went on to record that record and then I did not, sure. never heard of it. And I remember giving birth and Jerry Salerno called me and said, Deneen, get ready. And I just had had the baby and he went, get ready. You got to be in Miami in three weeks. I went, excuse me. He went, yeah, you yeah. hit. So I went, I do. I had a baby. Like I'm in no man. You didn't you have so media. That's you know, we didn't know. No. I didn't know anything. This and it was the bubbling under, right? Was it bubbling under, Gina? We were bubbling under the billboard one. the first week. I think we went into the 70s on that. The top 100, though. I mean, that's not... <laughs> We're not talking great. dance, top 100, top 100. I yeah. mean, you know, and it, it was, was great. Adam and, and I Carey. just went on the road together. I mean, Adam, Gino, and I went on the road, and just it was great. I learned so much from him. He's a, He was a wonderful performer, like a, dynamic with the crowd. I feel bad that he's not out there doing shows right now because this whole new generation would really love to see him live. He's if amazing. There, if there is a... Um, if there's an artist that can get on the top shows right now, it would be Collage. Oh, yeah. 100%. It would be Adam Morano and Collage, and he would be right up there. It would be Stevie B and Collage, TKA, George Lamont, because right. he brought in he brought in an entire era, right? Not, I agree. Not, not until you heard Raquel in a Dream did, did songs like that take um, the mainstay, the, the, the top 40 stations for real. And I wish we had the opportunity to do that. Uh, if we can get out of our way, we can do that now in 2022. Uh, but uh, let's, get, let's get back to the list, right? Gina, what do you have? Number three, I have Deneen Tearshed. Nice. Number there, three. There, hasn't been, there hasn't been a song that's got me more upset than <laughs> Denise Pierre Shed. Not, not, 99, not, 99 upset you? Are you, are you, are you, <laughs> are you denying it? No, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> so, That's and, all Gina. Are you denying it? That was okay. Gina, yeah. did so, I not? I was like, I can't understand a word. I don't know what she's saying. It took us 45 minutes to get the lyrics. I could not. We couldn't get but the lyrics correct. I, was, I love the I record. Was DJ, I was a DJ in a big house and freestyle club and it was like an anthem and I loved it. And I just thought that she would be able to bring it out and make it a little bit more fresh because it was so, the vocals were so hard to understand. And we were looking for an album filler. And I said, I'm telling you, it's going to be more than an album filler. Let's get it out there. And it, we really, really did well with it. And that's just one of my favorite ones forever. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the original too. Oh, so my, so my, my, only, my only point- Tell me why you're upset. So, so tell me why you're mad, right? So my only point of contention is the fact that Deneen didn't sing it originally because I would have loved to hear the original production with Deneen's voice. Ah, right. And so no, that's... I hear you. That, yeah. that, would, that would be interesting. Mm. I, wonder, uh, I wonder if that could be fun. Let's do it. I'll do it. Write it down. Love I'm, it. I'm executive producing stuff right now. <laughs> D9 is glad you're not mad at her. <laughs> no, but that's that's still one of my favorites because I love the original and I just thought she would be able to do it. You know, my number three is also occupied by D9, Deneen, um, and it's and it's Baby I Love You, right? So wow. for me, for me, the 12 inch record, the original 12 inch record, right, that I got, I loved it because the sample was there, you know, the praise the Lord and all that good stuff. But when they did it for yeah. uh, for the for the vipers, uh, they didn't have you didn't have that specific sample. You had to change it a little bit because of copyright stuff. Because at yep. that time it was it was becoming something um, where you needed to get the samples cleared. But the beat was hard. It was a bit harder than the twelve inch record, the original. So for me, um, it's always it's those. And then the vocals on there, the the writing of "Baby I Love You," it's so catchy. And then in the background, the guy going, I love you. And then she's like, Adam, you know, Adam. What else can so, you do? So I can tell you what that beat was. I can tell you what that beat was in the background. Yeah. The the temptation. The, the beat in the background is I took a sample of Temptation by Karina. Wow. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. We played the original parts, but we needed some balls on the bottom. So we used a little clip of it, you know. Beautiful. I'm guilty. <laughs> now we're, we're almost done with this list, but like going down memory lane has been so much fun so far. Yeah, really cool, man. And um, uh, I'm going to start with number two. Um, it's a song that was fe featured on the TPE album. Um, and um, But I loved it better when he did it on Viper and it was uh, Dance With Me. Um, yeah. That's kind of that, 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 I love that. I don't know why is it about that sound mm. that I can do that, like the beginning of it, the middle of it, the ending of it. That to me made the song much better. Some people may like the original version of the Mic Mac TPE, but for me, Nino Dance With Me, which is Adam, right? Am I am I am I speaking out of school? No. Was it Adam or Anthony? Was it Adam or no, Anthony? Well, one okay. version's Adam and one version is Anthony. Yeah, I, I believe the PPE version is Anthony and uh yes. and uh and the Viper 7 one is, is Adam. You're but correct. uh Nino yeah. to me. I don't okay. know why okay. that happened. I, I still don't know why they did that because he didn't yeah. have to change the vocal, but he did. I remember when because Anthony was starting to tour in place mm -hmm. of Adam. And yeah. it just was better. He re-recorded everything. He sang everything live. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the reason why he re-recorded it. But I like the original is my favorite. Right. I also have a 12-inch record that wasn't on anything but uh, a label called Renaissance Records. It was Nino, Just For You. My God. Um, oh, Renaissance. Yes. Joey, yes. Joey Cristinzio and Greg Ferry owned that. Oh, so man. That like, was a nightclub in Philly. That was... That was a, a really. That was a teen club. That was a teen club. Very show. popular. Great song, man. Yeah, I love that song. That's where it came from. I did not know that. That's right. Wow. So yeah, and these, these are the songs. These are the songs that that you know that were the evolution of my show and how I started. Because when I started my show, I can't say you know that I didn't play Viper because all I did was play Viper, and then the you know about four, five, six, and seven came out. And then uh, you know you start like man this is this is not getting I can't pick a good song out of here, um, but you know the first few compilations on Viper were so solid the Viper's Freestyle Hit Parade are undeniable, they and are. Um, I was re-listening to them before I came on here, and so many great songs. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I did find a few songs that I liked from the later compilations. Like there was a remake um, on number seven. It was called Through the Fire by Soul, and it was it's a remake of Through the Fire. But they, they did a freestyle remix of it, and the, the person who sings it on on the compilation, not sure if it was um, Adam's sister or, or whoever it was, but such a great job. And um, the freestyle beat complemented it so well. Uh, but uh, you know, these are things that you still appreciate all these years later. Listen, I appreciate it. you guys still. I didn't even you know you're not aware when you're in the moment, but the support that you have given us. Then and now, I, I I can't thank you enough. I mean, I don't think people realize artists like we're, we're relevant because of people like you, both of you. So I want to thank you because yeah, I gotta put I gotta put I gotta put the rank on the Duchess sometimes because then sometimes she does a like a Viper Seven weekly, um, <laughs> you know, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, um, um, <laughs> uh, freestyle show. You know what I mean? So it's like she's it. like. From Viper number nine, here's <laughs> Tino. What are you doing? We love you. <laughs> I can't with him. All right, so let's, the let's get down to the nitty gritty. Who who wants to share the number two? I'm I'm curious, Duchess. What do you have? <laughs> uh, my number two is um, also off the first one. It is Make Believe When I Hold You. Nice. I don't know. Very. Sense. I don't even know it. <laughs> Value to that song, it, or however you want. Oh, to I have to go. I have to go with new archives. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's that I don't want to sing it. I don't want to, you know, have people stop watching the show. But they'll, they'll uh, never listen to me again. <laughs> I could sing the whole thing, start to finish, for you. You just, I, I won't. You're welcome. Yeah, so, so, so make believe is a group that started at Viper, but ended up moving to Classified Records in in the West Coast. And they uh -oh. did they did a song with a sample, um, Wicked Plastic. Uh, I believe the song was called Love Forever. Um, and so, they, you know, it was their starting point. And, and they also had a, a couple of other songs after, you know, independently. And I believe one of the, um, the singers of the group is a DJ on, on social media, on Facebook. And he's done um, 
singles, um, you know, songs. Um, I his name escapes me, but um, yeah, make believe is a is a very uh, solid song. I know that Clubhouse dance music used to play the song all the time. I did it, but Clubhouse did. The, the it's other not people. Damon, is it Damon? Damon Kane, um, yes. Damon Kane, there, yes. Oh, I know that name. Yeah, yes. that's so Damon it. Kane is one of the singers of Make Believe. Yeah, we know him. We know him. We met him. I, I remember Damon. I remember him. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Here's some freestyle trivia for you. Damon Kane has the most depressing freestyle song of all time. <laughs> really? It's a, it's a 12 inch record. It's called In the Depths of Sorrow. Okay. And let me tell you something. Um, I have the 12 inch record. I still have it in, in my record closet. If you play that song, by the end of it, you're going to be like, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am so sad. You're gonna to need to watch a comedy show, um, a stand-up special, because <laughs> it'll, it'll get you. And then the the song goes in the depths of sorrow, and you hear, and then it's just it's just very depressing. Damon, I have to, listen. I have to. You schooled me because I don't. I those are two songs I don't know. So I have I'm gonna to, turn to you, but then don't call me. You know, at twelve eight now. Please talk to me. You're gonna remember it. Uh, I'll remember when I hear it. You're gonna know it. Send me yeah. everything. Gina would too. Yeah. I so like Gina, it. Gina, what do you have for your number two? Number two is Angela Garcia Sounds of Heartbreak. Great song. One of my favorite ones. It was That's almost number one. It was almost number one for mm. me. That's my number yeah. two. She just oh, did it, oh, it, it, feel it her did pain. It didn't make my list because it was so it was requested so much. I just <laughs> I, 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 I love the way. She sings the hook. It sounds yeah, like I'm a hook. I'm a hook person. I love the hook. Just unbelievable. I, I I was there when she recorded that, and yeah, ooh, it was a very good singer. Very. When good you hear the acapella of that song, you could hear her her emotion in the song. A lot of feeling, yeah. which I love. I admire that in a singer when they <laughs> say that, and she did. She knocked it out of the park. I love. It. That's my number two as well. Oh, it is your number two. Perfect. Yeah. Um, copycat, um, you know, you're a copycat. <laughs> you know, well, I, went, I went first. How can I copy you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> nice. we, didn't, we didn't share I the win. list. I win. <laughs> so, so listen, uh, when it comes to this song, this became one of those songs that women will call to uh, dedicate to their boyfriends who broke up with them that mm -hmm. week. And so <laughs> you get phone calls. <laughs> you get phone calls. And it'll be like, I want to hear sounds of heartbreak, you know, dedicated to, you know, Pito from, from me, Mari, you know, and it's just like one of those things, like every week, man, it, it either, either it was the same person with different names, she was doing the Adam Morano thing, or it was many different women that were brokenhearted every week <laughs> listening to the radio. No, it's a great song. Great song. Love that record. Yeah. So, so, um, I, again, guys, man, this is awesome. I, I love, I love the fact that we're together here to celebrate and to also discuss, you know, your your time with Viper. Um, so we're gonna go to our number ones. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Deneen because you know she is the number one uh, female artist in all of Viper. Um, so Deneen, who do you have? I know I, that you have. I, you have a few, I would you never. Have a few, I you remember have a few you. Albums, I, I'll be loving you. I love. Like I'll be loving you is probably my all time favorite, but. Stephanie Morano's Symphony of Love is my all-time favorite Viper record. I just, I love everything about it. I love it. It's my favorite. Julie is my other favorite, but she, I didn't know that she was in, but I thought she was. <laughs> I believe, I'm, I'm going to check. I believe that One Last Kiss by Julie was on two different labels. I'm not sure if it was Viper and Tasmania. It's on Taz. It's on Taz. Is it on Taz? But she's, that's, yeah. I have to say, is my female favorite. On, on our neck of the woods, it would be her. Well, so Deneen, you you by gotta far. come back for Tasmania countdown number two. You know, you gotta come back and share your list. We did one already with okay. the with the fellas for pure pleasure and Gennaro, but that'd be great if you can come back and do it as that well. That would be fun. Yeah. So you're you're choosing um uh the oh, Symphony of Love. By far my favorite record. Love Duchess, it. Duchess, what do you have for number one? My favorite song, number one, is Heaven Must Have Sent You Orlando. Man. Um, well, I have a, I have a, um, I have to do with this. That's, your friend, right? Orlando? that's my record. Yeah, it's mine. Okay. Well, it, I this, did the production. this song was so ridiculously replayed 
it, it was just insane how much I was obsessed, still obsessed. I still play, keep it on rotation. I play it all Did the time. Did you ever see him? Did you ever see him? No, never, never. In Hartford, Connecticut, in Hartford, Connecticut, what? if you were on, on Park Street and you were going to see Mr. Musica, uh -huh. you will actually hear Orlando, how much I sent you, in people's cars on a, on a CD or cassette, and then we booming it on their oh, yeah. Ocho, you know, just going down Park Street, yes. playing the song. And I'm like, what is it about the song? And then you hear it. <laughs> and they're like, okay, I understand now. And uh, great choice. Yeah. I just love it. I, bet I, I didn't. I didn't even remember I produced it until she said it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being there, and he was yeah. very. He was the total package. You would have really loved it. I love it. Oh, see, like, but when you hear stuff like that, it makes you love the song even more. Yes. And I'm telling you, that's just, it's been a favor of mine forever. Forever. Oh, and we I have to find him, Gino, and bring him, uh, bring him yeah, to her. How somebody cool. Ran, somebody run into him. We can find him. <laughs> he's out there. He's still in the area. Tune in, tune in this week for the Orlando <laughs> Hour on, on our show. <laughs> It'll be one it's song a, for, for an hour. It's <laughs> only that. Oh, it's only that and Spanish Kiss. They're the two songs we did. <laughs> Wait, didn't you do something like called Let Me Be The One or something like that? Orlando. Oh, Cheryl, I don't remember, Cheryl. I just know Spanish Kiss and have much to say. Yeah, he also... He Cheryl, also been... we will bring him to you. I pr D9 will deliver, I promise. <laughs> yes. he also, I will deliver he also, him. Orlando also <laughs> did a remake of, of The Promise. And, yeah, he uh, did, which I love. I, I, there are three different versions of Promise by the, three different artists. One was Tony Moran, mm -hmm. one is Orlando, and the other one is Rolando Montalvo. I'm going to go with Rolando Montalvo's version because um, if you listen to that, um, it was the most recent uh, re-recording of it and remake, but he sounds just like the record in a freestyle sense. So I'm going to go with that one. But um, I remember the Orlando remake of The Promise and Spanish Kiss and um, Heaven Must Have Sent You. Our true classics in the underground era of our music, you know. So, Gino, who did you choose as number one? I mean, it's just a no-brainer. I mean, Danine, I remember you. It's the greatest female record to ever come out of Wiper. It might, it's no, you know what? It's the best record to ever come out of Wiper. No, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt, it's no doubt. And it's not called the terror. It's just my favorite uh, song ever to come out of Wiper. It's not even close. Like, it's not even close. So, um, congratulations on that. Um, my my number one song is probably <laughs> it's probably uh, like that wasn't gonna happen. I don't want nothing to happen to Gino. He, he probably threatened him, right? You know? yes. no, just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> never. Yeah, okay. So look, uh, my number one is a sentimental one to me. It's a song that I think is the best collage song of all time, and it's underrated, right? It's yeah. not I'll be loving you. It's not boyfriend girlfriend. It's not Tango El Gato and those Pantalones, Selena remix, because you know he tried all those. Uh, to me, his best song is from his album, uh, Collage, um, the album, and it's called Diana. Um, oh yeah, we love Diana. Yeah, just, I love Just the the beginning of it with the the piano, that 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 piano in the beginning, and then he starts singing, and then he starts like. Crying in the middle of the song, like I can't forget <laughs> the times we shared. That's my true. Mind, my mind, body, and soul. Yeah, that's a, it's that's like, a true um, story. Wow. Yeah, it's like, it's like really? Diana, Diana, I've been wanting you for so long. Uh, you know, just Diana, I need you more and more. I mean, it was, it was, it's just to this day, it's great. Now he killed it afterwards because he made it Susanna. And, oh. and he, he he and well, he got over her. her. Then he was in love with Jocelyn. Then he was over her. And, and Jocelyn came out. Yeah, I was like, what the heck? But, but, but you're right. That was great. That was great. Was I that. forgot about that one. Mm. And I remember her. I remember Diana. Yeah. I remember Diana, too. Yep. And oh. she broke his heart, if anybody and did. He still used her real name? Like, Oh, yeah. It was oh, yeah. Real. And Jocelyn's real. about Jocelyn Enrique. I love it. And I remember I him walking up to Jocelyn Enriquez and he said, I'm going to write a song for you and it's going to be a hit. And I remember her looking at him like, okay, who is yeah. this strange man? But, and he did. He he, yeah. he just was enamored. Wow. Yeah. That's, what, that's, that's when freestyle hubris, thank you, Gennaro, is, uh, <laughs> it, it was, was, was adamant with Adam. Um, but uh, all these uh, freestyle punts, you know. But uh, <laughs> let me tell you, um, to have you guys here, to you guys are the genesis, the the concept is here. Is Gino, 
producer, Deneen, the first female artist. Uh, the only person that's missing is Adam. So in Adam's place, we bought the Duchess because, you know, the Duchess is the 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 big number one Viper uh, 7 fan. Um, you can listen to the Duchess every uh, Thursday and Friday at 90.7 uh, WTCC, Clubhouse Dance Music. Uh, you could uh, find WTCC on the uh, radio app. Also, check her out on Sundays on Party 1019. Uh, her first 30 minutes this week probably is going to be all Viper stuff. I, <laughs> I know it's going to happen. It is now. Now it is. Yeah, I knew it. You are. Anyway. The queen. You are. Uh, big shout out going out to Big shout out going out to um uh, uh, our our DJ, uh, the Vital Assassin DJ Cliff Potts. Um, I'm Pop. sure that I'm sure that be, previously when we had Deneen, he did a Deneen mix and he did a, a a mix with all Deneen songs for like ten minutes straight, just banging them out. So now we're gonna probably have a, a Viper uh, mix coming up. Oh, I love it. That'll be cool. Vital Assassin. Yeah. But guys, um, any any last words? I'm, I'll start with uh, Gino. What would you like to say to anyone that supported uh, the genesis of your career, the beginning of Viper Seven? I mean, we we were always very humble. We appreciated everything. You know, it, it was tough for us because you know, freestyle was dominated by New York, Connecticut, Texas, Florida, Chicago. We f- sort of felt like we got lost in the sauce a little bit. You know, we felt like the outsiders, you know, but we really had a plan. We had a plan to make a certain kind of freestyle that was going to get us on the radio. And we would go, I mean, to this day, I still remember like us going to Texas and doing a, a records, you know, autograph and it would be lines down the street, Connecticut, lines down, Rochester it was like, she was, it was crazy how big we were in Rochester, lines in the mall. I mean, the it, freestyle people, I'll say it again. As crazy as this genre is right now, they're, they're the greatest fans in the world. The good fans yep. are the greatest ones in the world. So, yeah. I mean, I started my career. It started my whole life. There wouldn't be a label. There wouldn't have been a Deneen. There wouldn't have been anything I've ever done in my life. I started with freestyle. Freestyle. Is that you know, so, is that, was that the uh, catalyst for eventually having 418, the dance label, and then oh, 418 freestyle? Yeah, I mean, I always wanted freestyle, but to me, when I was starting 418, which will be 10 years in July, next July, it'll be 10 years, the label's there. The freestyle really wasn't hitting to me eight or nine years ago. So, And I was starting DJing, so I loved house and I loved dance. But I always wanted to have a freestyle label, too. So I was ready, and I remember having the conversation with you and your partner at the time. Um, it was just always so loyal everybody was so loyal and there, w- there was no social media you know to walk into a store in Terre Haute Indiana and everybody knew who you were knew who she was and thought I sang destiny I mean that's you know <laughs> with, I mean that's just radio that's radio and hardcore fans yeah. that's not social media you couldn't pick up a phone then so it shows you how much these records resonated and how much of an impact. So for me, I, I, I always say thank you. I'm, I'm very humble that way. Deneen, um, same thing with you. Um, you. You see now that there are new fans coming and joining the Deneen uh, fan club, and there are people that are being introduced to songs you did all these years ago. Um, so how do you feel? It's unbelievable. I said to, I had called Gino. I met, I was at my son's, t-ball game and my son is eight years old and i see a a, a mom staring at me and i'm like maybe we we met in this supermarket or something and she's like looking at me and she has a little girl next to her and she said she was waving at me and she said can my daughter meet you and i said sure and she comes over and she said my daughter's a huge she's 11 years old she's on my uh facebook page Wow. And she said, I love your music. We do Freestyle Fridays every night in my house. Every Friday, I'm sorry, every Friday in my house. I wanted, listen, I'll cry thinking about it. Gino knows I'm very emotional because that oh hit me. Wow. I'm thinking to myself, I have chills because you would have, if you would have told me 30 years ago that we would be here and I would be staring at a little girl who's friends with my son. I was just so humbled by that experience. And I just hugged this kid and we're friends now. We, we go back and forth and we text and she's a great kid, Giovanna. And it was just amazing. And I, and that, I'm just humbled. I, and I appreciate the fans and I appreciate you and I appreciate Cheryl and I appreciate every DJ and everybody that streams our records. 
to this day. I just thank you for keeping us around and relevant. This is CBR's Clubhouse Live. I want to thank everyone who's watching. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. For Gito Caporali, Deneen, and the Duchess, I'm CBR <laughs> saying goodnight. And remember, it's not who you love, it's how. We'll talk to you soon. Love you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.